Taking the tack apart is quite simple. We have uh, two lenses here that are surrounded by a gasket. So you can use um, ideally something plastic, something as simple as a guitar pick or a credit card. And you'll just lean in here and just pry up and you should be able to get that to separate. Second one, it should come off quite easily. Quick tip, if you so happen to have a small suction cup, maybe it's for the shower or car window or whatever it may be, place that on there, push down, that will pop off real easy. It's worth noticing that at the, uh, this is a clock, at about the nine o'clock and the three o'clock, you're gonna see two little tabs. Those tabs are used to landmark the lenses to put them back in place. Both of the lenses have slots cut out for those tabs. This final ring, just turn upside down, it should come right off. Now flip the tack over, upside down, and you're going to remove the torque screws. You can see there's three of them. Once you've removed the three torque screws, just Place the tack in your hand, flip it upside down, by applying a little bit of pressure on the prong, that should slide right out. In my original video about two years ago, I showed how to just peel back this area of the uh, faceplate and then uh, so you can get access to the sensor that's below. But for this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the faceplate altogether and I feel that this is actually a, a better way to repair it. And if you need to replace the LCD screen, it just gives you a lot of space to work with and you're not gonna break anything. Before we take anything apart, uh, it's worth noticing the landmark right here. So there's a notch inside your faceplate and there is a small piece of plastic that it fits into. This way, when you reassemble it, you won't have rotated the uh, RPMs on the faceplate. So to remove the tack needle, what I want you to do is just turn the needle and then bring it back and you're going to feel there's a stop there. That stop is actually going to stop the small little axle that this sits on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rest it against the stop and we're going to keep turning it. And while we're turning we're going to pull out a little bit. It's This is not actually threaded. It just sits on there, but by turning it when we remove it, it makes it a little bit easier. You can see the gaps increasing, and there you go. And you can... Here's a closer look, and you can tell that there uh, there is no thread. This is just a friction fitting. Getting the faceplate separation started is a bit tricky, so I'll show a clip from uh, two years ago since uh, I've taken this one off a couple times now and uh, it'll come off a lot easier than yours. What you want to do, it'll probably look something like this. You want to get right in here and you want to just separate a little bit of the glue nice and slowly until you're able to pry up just like that and then pry up some more. And pry up. So once you get it started, you should be able to slowly peel back. Hear the glue keep coming off. Again, this one's a little bit easier because I've removed it a couple times. Try to remember to place this one face down. So what we're looking at here is a brand new LCD screen that's been installed already. However, on your LCD screen, what you should notice is it's gonna look slightly different and this area that is in black is going to have some caulking in it. It's probably gonna be dielectric silicone. What happens is the ribbon sending a signal and that silicone starts to short out after it gets older. And therefore, by shorting up the signal, the signal's not strong enough to make it to the LCD screen. What you wanna do is using something like a Q-tip that's, you know, you've cut that isn't too sharp. 
you, you'll be able to scrape away as much of that silicone as you can. What's worth noting is that the LCD display is exactly just that. It's just an LCD display. The hours for your Yammer engine are actually stored on a chip on the motherboard and then transmitted through the ribbon up to your LCD screen. So even if your hours haven't been working, they have been updated on the motherboard. So by replacing this LCD screen or by doing them the repair, you will have the original hours that were on your motor. So if you're gonna do the first method where you're just gonna scrape off the silicone and see if it works, my advice would be to scrape it off, clean it as best as you can with a Q-tip, etc., or sharpen Q-tip, and then if you're at the boat, gently plug this back in. Turn the key and see if your display works. If it doesn't, try clean it a little bit more and then uh, try it again. Once it works, then reassemble the, uh, the tack. If after cleaning it, your LCD screen still doesn't work, uh, what you may want to do is inspect these, the, the ribbon. With my particular um, tack, I cleaned it, had it working, I posted the video on YouTube two years ago, and then uh, maybe four months later, six months later that season, it started to fade it a little bit and then uh, stopped working altogether. And when I took it apart again to check, I noticed that the ribbon had actually cracked. And I'll show you a clip of that right now. So if we're gonna replace the LCD screen, the first thing to do at this stage is to disconnect the ribbon. Now, if you're lucky, uh, your ribbon may look like this. I believe this is a 2006 uh, setup. Uh, I have seen many people ask online about how to replace the ribbon because it has what would look like this. It's almost like a hardening, hardened caulking around it. So you are going to have to remove that in order to take this apart. So I'll show you a couple angles of it so at least you know what's underneath. So removing the ribbon is quite simple. Uh, if you have something flat or some tweezers or something on the right end of it, you're going to notice that it's a little bit longer. So just pry up a tiny bit under there. And then you can move into here and it just, that's just a ribbon catch. Now you could re remove the uh, old LCD screen just from here, but we've gone this far. So my advice would be to, there's gonna be three of these pieces right here. And we're gonna just wanna remove those. So if you see, it's got a little space, you give it a tiny little bit of a crack, a little bit of a squeeze, it pops up. Rotate it, next one, a little bit of squeeze, pops up. Next one, a little bit of squeeze. And just check and see which one hasn't let go yet. There you go. Slip soft to the side. Now the nice thing with this is at least you can kind of rest it down and you don't have to worry about damage anything, and you can really focus on removing the LCD screen. The LCD display has two-way tape on the back, and that's what keeps it in place. Here you can see the rear of the LCD display that I've removed. See, there's some two-way tape on there. Now the trick is to use either some uh, plastic or whatever tool you have available to kind of pry in and pop the old LCD display out. Um, I wasn't as careful with it because I'm replacing it and I already had the part. So it did break coming out. This is the way mine came out. You see it, it broke and uh, that's okay. because So now you should be left with this. And uh, here's the, uh, the new LCD display, which I purchased. You can see it has a very different, almost more of a plastic insulation on it. To install it, the ribbon just slips through the, uh, there's a slot. And there you are. 
Now the faceplate will be on here, so I wouldn't be too worried about gluing the uh, LCD display in. It, it's in there, and the faceplate will hold it in place as well. If you have an extra set of hands for this part, uh, it'll be quite easy, but if not, you can manage. Uh, all I do is I just line it up until it slides in, just like that. Uh, the new ribbon seems to be quite stiff, so it actually kind of can only go in in one spot. Once you have it in place, your keeper goes C4. And just snaps into place. Now, just move the LCD screen a tiny bit. Line up the three uh, prongs. Push them together. And now all you're going to do is the opposite of before. Give them a bit of a squeeze until it goes together. Squeeze each one. Squeeze. And squeeze. Uh, there you go. And you're back together. Quick test before I put it back together, and there's your hour on your LCD screen. If there is an issue, it could be with the LCD screen you purchased, uh, depending if you bought it off eBay or off uh, ketospeed.com, or if the ribbon wasn't seated properly. Either one of these issues would be a lot easier to correct if the tack is not reassembled. So we'll put the faceplate back on. We're going to line up the slot first. Put the slot on here. And then you'll notice there's actually guides on either end. And those will hold it in place. Back on. Now the spindle right here should be at zero because that's where we removed it. However, my advice is to line up your needle at about one, just like that. Push it in. And once it's in, now we're going to turn it. You're going to feel the stop. And now Turn it gently. Check. Okay, not a little more. Check. Getting pretty close. Here we go. That's one of the issues that people have when removing or putting the needle back on. Uh, I've seen in some of the comments, uh, they placed the needle back on, they didn't use the stop correctly, and now it's idling at, you know, let's say 1500 RPMs or something. Like I said, if that happens, just rotate it till you feel the stop. And then even if right now, if you had to, you could turn this all the way around until it stops at zero again. Okay. Before you uh, place this back in the housing, one thing to notice is the length of the ribbon. It has a fold in it. I personally would prefer if the ribbon was a bit smaller, but I think the length of it is so reinstalling it is quite easy. Um, so the issue with this is you can see that it is outside of the plane where the housing will hit. So the housing will have to kind of bend it into place. Just something to be cognizant of when you, when you place it back in the housing because you don't want it to pinch on the edge. Uh, the ribbon flexes quite well. It, you just don't want to fold it. If you fold it, uh, you know, like a nice big radius like that, you're not gonna have any issues. If you fold it, it's gonna crack and it's gonna break. Okay, we're gonna reassemble this. And as you see the ribbon there, you're gonna keep an eye on it and make sure. You can see it kind of pushed back in on its own. It did not get pinched. It is, I think you can kind of see that. Okay and you're in. Uh, now what you're going to want to do is keep a little bit of pressure on the front, flip it upside down, and replace your three torque screws.
Now it's secured, flip this back over. At this point, you probably want to give everything a kind of a quick wipe because whatever is there is kind of going to stay there. So put the uh, trim surround in. There's no orientation. It just kind of pops in, stays in place. Now remember to pay attention to the two landmarking spots located here. A little bit of pressure. And you are uh, put back together. Uh, hopefully this video helped. Uh, it's actually a really satisfying uh, repair to do. And it's so nice to see your air meter working again, uh, especially for service and everything else. Uh, what did the YouTube channel say now? Uh, like, comment, and don't subscribe because I don't do many of these videos, okay? Take care, guys.